The amazing drama you're about to see is a matter of human record. You may believe it or not, but the real people who lived this story, they believe it, they know. They took that one step beyond. Bombay, Calcutta mail moving through the hot vastness of India. Still remote, mystical, mysterious, even in the jet age. India's teeming millions look upon life and death in ways that are difficult for us to truly understand. Like the young American couple in the next compartment. You know where I like to be? Where? Oh, my own swimming pool with a cold beer in my hand. Get the water for the salt tablet, dear. It is kind of ugly at that. Better have two. Yes, sir. No passports, no cholera shots, no customs. Are you really that sorry we came? Well, it does seem kind of silly. You know, we plan on this trip for 700 years until we go to someplace like Paris, London, or someplace sensible. No, no, my girl's got to see the Taj Mahal. Well, wasn't it beautiful? Sure, it's beautiful. I knew it was beautiful before we left. Makara sab. Makaro sab, makaro. Make a hot guy who... Get out of here. This is our compartment. Get out of here! Man, the poor man must be lost. I told you to get out. What are you getting so excited about? Mapkar, Sam. Mapkar. Go on, get out of here. Glenn, you're frightening him. He doesn't understand you. Get out! Glenn, look, stop it! Some trouble? Oh, kya hai? Hamara paila din hai train me. Do gadi baat. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. I must plead for your indulgence. He is an ignorant villager. His first time on a train, he became confused. So many of our people have never traveled on trains before. It is difficult for them to understand about the different classes. Well, that's a fine way to act. Getting all excited over nothing and in this heat. Don't let that conductor fool you. That old man wasn't confused. He knew exactly what he was doing. What? Oh, didn't you see it? See what? His face. Ever see such a murderous expression in your life? Murderous? That sweet old man? Sweet old man? Well, if we'd been asleep, that sweet old man would have cut our throats for the baggage. You're some judge of character you are. But you better take a couple of nerve pills, too. Don't act like I'm goofy. I saw the look on his face. I saw the look on your face. Betty, will you knock it off? Well, maybe it is the heat. You better give me those pills. What are we supposed to use for water? What happened? Oh, man. I did that? Get us some more water. Oh, we've been ringing for that porter ever since Bombay. I'll get it. Hey, are you all right? Yes. Yes, I'm all right. Sir. Sir. 
It is wiser for first-class passengers to remain in their own compartment, sir. Uh, I was looking for the porter. The porter is greatly occupied. May I be of assistance? Yes, we need another bottle of water. I will tell the porter. He will bring it to your compartment at his earliest opportunity. Wait. Who is that old man in there? Which old man, sir? That old man right there, the one who tried to break into our compartment. Do you know anything about him? I talked to him after the misunderstanding. I assure you, he was only confused. You know who he is? No, sir. You sure? Sir, we are a nation of hundreds of millions, and most old men look quite the same. Okay. anything, I'll kill him. Leonard! Lord, Lord. a doctor. I'm afraid you'll have to settle for a medical missionary. I sent word to have my jeep brought over. We'll take him to the mission. It's nothing serious. It's heat prostration. Are you sure? Oh, I think so. Yes, his pulse is better already. Are you the gentleman's lady? Yes. I am Constable Gaisin. The people say he ran through the streets like one demented until he collapsed from the heat. And not even to wear a hat at such an hour. What help can I be, Mr. Graham? Oh, he's quite all right. Mujer Madakoro. Mujer Madakoro. We have no tourist attractions in our village. Why then are you here? What? As the constable, madam, there is certain information I must have. My husband left the train unexpectedly. But why? I don't know why. You're gonna be all right, dear. I've got to find him. I've got to find him. Find who, madam? No, it's nothing. It's, it's the heat. It's made him delirious or something. Find who? I don't know who. There, there, there was an old man on the train. My husband took a dislike to him. But why? Well, he thought he was trying to steal something. And how does this concern our village? 
The old man got off here. My husband followed him. What did the old man look like? Well, now, what difference does it make? Madam, if we have a thief in our village... I didn't say he was a thief. But you said your husband... My husband isn't feeling well. What did the old man look like, madam? He was an old man, that's all. He was carrying a rooster. He had a terrible scar. Like so? Yes. With such a scar, that could only be Kumar. And Kumar, madam, is no thief. May I see your passport, please? I left it on the train but with everything else. A certain report must be filled. Oh, wait a minute. My husband kept his in his jacket. Yes, there it is. Thank you, madam. I will return it to you at the mission when I have finished my report. Old Kumar, this is most strange. I told you my husband was ill and not responsible. Yes, so you did, madam. Call a bit. Now look a bit over towards your wife. Oh, too much. Uh, you've got the arteries of a boy of 20. Yeah, the brains of a three-year-old. <laughs> Boy, I feel like a jackass. What was his name, anyway? Come on, Len, now forget it. His name's Kumar. I must have scared him half to death. No. Kumar doesn't scare so easy. Oh, I wish I knew what was the matter with me, anyway. But my wife will tell you. I don't think there's a single person that I really dislike. And here we are, thousands of miles from home, and I see an old man with a rooster. Just standing there in the doorway to our compartment. Well, you'd think I'd seen Adolf Hitler or something. Oh, it was an awful feeling. There was fear, and there was hate, and there was... I had the craziest feeling that if I didn't kill him, he was going to kill me. Len! Mr. Barrett, you're just going to have to try to relax. I'll even tell you how high your blood pressure is. Uh, you see? What is this? How can a thing like this happen anyway? Who knows? Perhaps it's the reverse of love at first sight. People accept that readily enough. It gives me the willies. Well, you're going to live. <laughs> That's for sure. Now, this part of India is awfully hot this time of the year. Or maybe you picked up one of our infamous bugs. I don't know. Do I intrude? Oh, no. Come in. Your passport, Mr. Barrett. Oh, this is uh, Constable Guy Singh. He's the one who found you and sent for me. Oh, thank you very much. Your health has improved. I'm happy to observe. Yes, I seem to be feeling a little better now. Physically, anyway. Then, embarking on a train tonight will prove no hardship. Tonight? That's pretty quick. You really should rest for a few days. Besides, the only train tonight's the Calcutta Express. It doesn't even stop here. Tonight it will stop here. In honor of Mr. and Mrs. Barrett of Westport, Connecticut. Twelve minutes after the hour of ten. It's a very fine train. Oh, yes, but if Mr. Graham thinks that he should rest for a few days... The arrangements have been made, madam. Uh, look, if it's all the same to you, I just as soon follow Mr. Graham's advice. I do seem pretty tired. Twelve minutes after the hour of ten, Mr. Barrett. Boy, uh, your constable, what's his name, there certainly is no ambassador of goodwill. Oh. I don't know what's the matter. I do. He's a self-important little dictator. No, 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 no. He's not like that at all, really. Well, at least you'll get a couple of hours of bed rest. That is, if you don't mind the accommodations. There's our combination schoolroom, storeroom, and uh, guest room. Quite a collection of odds and ends, isn't it? This is the way some of the villagers say thank you. Of course, no thank yous are ever necessary. Still, they're a proud people, and I suppose I'll go on collecting it until it crowds me into the street.
I wonder what happened to her. It was slashed with a knife while the clay was still wet. How do you know? It does look like knife marks. Never thought of that. She's charming. You know, that's really very, very good, what's left of it. What does that word down there mean? Oh, purely. I love it. Yes. Well, I think you better lie down now, Mr. Barrett. Uh, your wife will bring you dinner. Of course, I should warn you that our food here is what is charitably called simple but nourishing. Glenn? Glenn? Feeling well, well? I'm fine. Well, the next time I ask you to take a salt tablet, will you please listen to me? I'm sorry, honey. I'm all right now. I'm all right. Okay. There's no time for this, Mrs. Barrett. Help me with him, quickly. Mr. Graham is doing all that is possible. Why? Why, why, why? Why? Kumar's wife. Ask the similar question. How can the same thing happen twice in one lifetime? Twice? 
Piari. She was once beautiful, as well as beloved. Beloved by two men, unfortunately. Kumar and Ranjit. Ranjit? A very gifted young artist in our village, but with a wildness in him. The scar across Kumar's throat was put there with the same knife that sliced this clay while it was still soft. Leonard said that had been done with the knife. Ranjit, in a fit of passion, attacked Kumar. Kumar slashed back with his own knife. The blade cut across Ranjit's eyes. A blind artist is a very pathetic creature. On Kumar's wedding night, Ranjit went to the house, broke in, and attacked the man he had come so passionately to hate. In the darkness, the blindness was no handicap, but Kumar had a gun. What's that got to do with us? Madame asked me why. Perhaps I'm telling her why. I feel as responsible for the tragedy as anyone else. Why? Madame, have you not questioned the apparent senselessness of what has happened today? When I first saw your husband's passport, I should have stayed with him until he left our village. The day Kumar killed Rajit is very clear in my mind. It was my first homicide. July 17, 1925. Go to him, Mrs. Barrett. Now. Is it Mr. Graham? Look at the date of birth of Mr. Bennett's passport and tell me if you think it is ever over. July 17, 1925. Leonard Bennett was born on the same day Kumar killed Ranjit. The last breath of one human being becomes the first breath of another. There are hundreds of millions of people that believe that. And if, as in this particular instance, the seeds of vengeance and hate survive, then it follows that all that is good in the human spirit also survives. Now, for the millions who reject this concept, well, there are words like uh, fate, coincidence, destiny, all very useful words when trying to explain the world of the unknown. 